What is going on guys? Episode 25 of Obscure, well, sort of obscure toy lines from the 80s, 90s, and today. And I just have to say thank you so much guys for getting us to episode 25 because this is all because of your views and suggestions. So let's start off with Tomei's 2XL. Now I say Tomei because that's the version I remember as a kid, but it originally came out in the late 70s with Mego and ended its lifespan in the 90s with Tiger Electronics. 2XL was one of the first smart toys. It had exhibited rudimentary intelligence, memory, gameplay, and responsiveness. Dubbed the toy with a mind of his own, he was able to tell stories and sing using his special 8-track tapes. The toy's tapes asked multiple choice questions, and based on the yes or no input that you put in, you could interact with the 2XL. Dubbed the great educational toy, 2XL won multiple awards in its run, and decades later, it's still fondly remembered. Courtesy of a viewer suggestion, this is Bone Age by Kenner, 1987. Now when this was suggested in the comments, I immediately had a flashback of kindergarten or grade 1. Bone Age was a play center in my school. Now although awesome, Bone Age didn't last into the second series of its toy run because it didn't benefit from having a cartoon or a comic and this was getting close to the end of the Kenner Toys run altogether. So basically you got an instruction manual and you could put your bones together to create a dinosaur cave with a caveman character and then you were also encouraged to make vehicles, battle stations, flying machines, you know like whatever you could think of they would be pegged together with clear pegs and it would put the bones together, um, towers, helicopters, the dinosaur itself, it was really a fantastic toy for its time. Hit Clips from Tiger Electronics 1999 some people call Hit Clips the grandfather of the MP3 player. This digital audio player created by Tiger Electronics played ultra lo-fi mono one minute clips of pop songs. This made 80 million dollars for Tiger Electronics in its five year run. Hit Clips would even spin off to Hit Clip Records and Kid Clips, both fading away by 2005. But, you know, for its run, this was something that was impressive, and I remember my sister being 7 or 8 years old, having about 10 of these hanging off of her keychain. All one-minute songs, In Sync, Aaron Carter, etc. Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates, THQ Toys, 1991. Now here's a perfect example of one of those obscure or forgotten toy lines. I knew that this was an NES game back in the day, but I had no idea that there was a cartoon, let alone a toy line, that corresponded to it. Now this was one of those toy lines and cartoon series that came in a flash, although it was 64 episodes, making it a long single season. Peter Pan was voiced by John Marston, and the toy line was produced by THQ, the same company that did the video game versions. Other than that, I couldn't even find a toy commercial, so kudos to the person that suggested this one a few episodes back, but I had a hard time finding anything about the toy line, other than it was a single series run, and it had several of the characters and two villains. They go for about 15 bucks a pop sealed on eBay. I'm telling you man, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel to try and find info on this. Sorry guys. So let's keep going with pirate toys. Pirates of Dark Water by Hasbro, 1991. Adventures on the mysterious watery world of Myrrh, where Ren, heir to the throne of Octopon, and Bloth, the evil black-hearted pirate lord, engage in combat as they sail on a quest to find the fabled 13th Treasure of Rule. Whoever discovers these treasures will forever have the power to chart the course of the world for ages to come. Based off the Hanna-Barbera cartoon of the same name, Pirates of Dark Water had 11 characters and 2 ships that you could collect. I remember the ships more than anything. The sail was kind of like a, a raincoat material, so I'm guessing that they were waterproof or meant to be played with at least not in the tub, maybe squirting water at each other. Snailians, the Supersonic Shell Fighters, JPI, 1992. Snailians was a hugely requested toy, an obscure toy line that I've been asked several times over the last half year to find. 
And this is the best commercial I could come up with. This is Snailians from 1992. So Snailians all came with the same comic book and basically they're from Snail Francisco and they live just underneath the earth. And um, it's a twin brother and sister and a little brother that steal their spaceship so they come up and they need to try and get it back but they have to battle the evil Snailians. So the toys are hard plastic. They all come with a armor case and a little buddy as well as a um, reversible plastic uh, cup that will shoot their little buddy at each other. So basically you're supposed to do like um, when you play army and you shoot the little friend at all the other guys that you position. It's actually an interesting looking toy. The toy value uh, carded is between 30 and 40 dollars on eBay so there is a market for it and if you're interested in snailians because this is a lot of information for them you can actually go check out their Facebook page there's a snailian Facebook page I'm glad I finally found the information for this because I know people have been asking about it for a while what's her face Mattel 2001 I received several thank yous on the last episode for covering more girl toys, so I'm going to try and make an active effort to add at least one per episode from here on out, depending on how long the series continues. So what you notice right away is, What's-Her-Face had a completely blank face. No hair, no facial features, it was just a rubber head. It was intended to be drawn on with a special washable marker, or you could use stamps and stickers as well as change her clothes and her wig. She walked the line between a fashion doll and an accessory toy. It lasted for about two years, but you know, competing against Barbie didn't do so well. But from what I hear, it was a uh, favorable toy in the early 2000s. And that is gonna do it, guys, for 25 episodes, guys. We're so close to covering 300 different toy lines. And again, I have to say thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and of course, suggesting toy lines each and every time that I make one of these. Uh, this series would not be possible without you guys. So again, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you continue to enjoy them because I continue to make them. Uh, and I'm enjoying doing it, obviously. So um, that's going to do it for this week, guys. And I'll see you in uh, about two weeks. I'm going to take a little break. We'll do more obscure toy lines. And we're going to get to the flea market again. Take care, guys. Bye.